This morning I'd like to spend a few moments in Psalm 96. Now I love singing and I have to admit that since the lockdown I've missed it very much. Whether it's a song from one of the shows or a song of praise uh, in church, I, I just enjoy being with others and sharing the experience. Hopefully it won't be too long before we can meet together again and just enjoy letting our songs fill the air. Songs can often be cosy, nice melodies, or they can be raw and dynamic. The book of Psalms is like that. It's a songbook like no other, and it helps us in putting into words what we're feeling. At the moment, there's so much change in the air, so much uncertainty, and we need the psalmist to lead us like a good worship leader and encourage us to sing a new song. That's what this psalm is about. Thank you, Nicole, for reading it to us. Thank you for helping us to hear it so, so well read. Verse 1 is all about singing a new song. Let the whole earth sing to the Lord, it says. Don't know about you, but do you like new songs? I'm a brought up with the 60s music sort of bloke, really, and Tony Blackburn's one of my DJ heroes. I will remember listening to him on Radio Luxembourg with my head underneath my blanket so that mum and dad wouldn't know that I had the radio on late at night. I admit to struggling nowadays with some of the new popular music. And I often wonder whether it will still be being played on the future Radio 2 in 50 years. Probably, probably be on the equivalent of Pop Master. Now, I don't think I'm any different from the Hebrews, really. They were pretty set in their ways and patterns. Indeed, Moses almost had to drag them out of slavery in Egypt. Egypt wasn't perfect, but it was predictable. They knew how many bricks they'd have to make for their masters and launching out into the unknown was a different thing altogether. Now, I'm not set in my ways. I hope I'm not anyway. But music, yes, I suppose I am. Psalm 96 is about teaching people to sing a new song. It's about finding a new way of launching into the unknown. This is a psalm which is full of four-part harmony, each part needing the other part to be sung together to create that perfect sound that we long to hear. So let's just unpack this psalm a minute and see what parts are needed. The first layer of the new harmony is to recognise that the new song is a global song. You can't miss it throughout the psalm. And perhaps this is the melody part. Let the whole earth sing to the Lord, verse 1. Publish his glorious deeds among the nations, verse 3. Nations of the world recognise the Lord, verse 7. Let all the earth tremble before him. Tell all the nations the Lord reigns, is verse 9. This is music with a world edge. The old song is too insular. And it operates on the assumption that life revolves around me and my issues. There's a lot of I in the old song. But there's something to be taken into account here. If you look back far enough to scripture, you realise that the old song is really the basis of the very new song. In Genesis 12, when God calls Abraham out of Haran, it is so that he can multiply and become a blessing to the whole world. However, somehow that whole world part of the song drops off after a few years and the descendants of Abraham become mostly interested in looking for ways to get blessings from God. They're so self-absorbed that they have absolutely no idea what they're supposed to do when they get them. Later on in Israel's history, the low point comes when God sends Jonah to give a message to the hated Assyrians and he runs in the opposite direction because he's afraid that they might repent and experience God's blessing too. But the theme is shouted loud and strong in the Gospels. God so loved the world. 
Go and make disciples of all nations. And in Matthew 16, Jesus leaves Judea and goes north into Caesarea Philippi, which is Gentile territory. It's a pagan area. And it's there that for the first time he admits to being the Messiah. It's not in the temple. It's not even in Jerusalem. It's in another country. There's a lot of talk about globalisation these days, international connectedness, but this isn't such a big shock for the Lord's people, really. We've been singing about globalisation from the moment we began to sing God's new song. It's there in scripture all the way through. It's a part of who we are. It's a part of the church's DNA. The new song isn't one that can be confined to church walls or among a single ethnic group or people. The new song is a global song. It's world music, global transformation, and it challenges us to look beyond our own needs, our own families, our own church, our own people, our own country. It challenges us to look out and see the big picture, the world. Jesus says in Acts 1.8, You will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. It's a global song. And the second layer of harmony is about the wonder and the works of the Lord. Sing to the Lord and praise his name, says verse 2. Each day proclaim the good news that he saves, publish his glorious deeds among the nations. This second layer is a worship song. And it helps us to refocus our lives so that they're responding to our awesome God and what he does. In life, it's so easy to get sidetracked and to start singing our own songs, or at least songs that are about ourselves. We like to sing about ourselves, our issues, our struggles, our loves, and perhaps that's okay to some degree. But there's a new song that's there, that is waiting to be sung. And it's not really about you or me. It's about the glory of God. There's something else we need to recognise, though, as we sing this layer of the harmony. There's a paradox at work here. And the more we sing the new song about the Lord, the more our own issues are addressed. You see, when we sing about ourselves, we never get beyond ourselves. But when we sing about the Lord, we're no longer driven by our love quests and failures. The harder we work at fixing ourselves, the more frustrated we become. But the more we focus on the Lord and what he's doing, the more completely our own issues are dealt with. That's quite powerful, really. And it leads us to understand another layer of harmony, that this new song is exclusive. Verse 4, he's to be feared above all gods. The gods of other nations are mere idols, says the psalmist, but the Lord made the heavens. The Bible recognises that there are other spiritual beings, deities, gods if you will, with a very small g, deities that have been reduced to idols but they're impotent compared to the Lord. Notice the tagline. The end of verse 5, it says quite bluntly, the Lord made the heavens. The other so-called gods of that day, and indeed for much of the world today, seem to be attached to various aspects of nature. There were gods of thunder, gods of the sky, gods of the rivers, gods of the ocean, gods of nature. But the psalmist affirms that it is the Lord Yahweh, the Lord Jehovah, who made the heavens, and he is Lord over all. And so in verses 11 to 13, the heavens, the earth, the sea, the fields, the crops, the trees, they're all commanded to enter into the praise of the Lord. Why? Because being the creator, the one over all, our God is the only one worthy of praise. Verse 11, let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. 
Let the sea and everything in it shout his praise. Let the fields and their crops burst out with joy. Let the trees of the forest rustle with praise before their Lord, for he is coming. Every single breath. That's the gist of the life that sings the new song. It's all about Jesus, the Lord. And when we sing this part of the harmony, we're joining with the heavens, the earth, the sea, the fields, the trees and the forests to sing God's praises. My life song, our life song, is the new song about him. And the fourth layer of harmony is rooted in the future justice of the Lord. So much of what we sing is rooted in the past, and we certainly don't want to forget the past. But the past can't define us. Yet our songs tend to be reactions to the good and the bad things which have happened to us. We sing of nostalgic good old days. We sing of lost love, lost children, lost jobs. Every time we open our mouths, the conversations, the songs, they all draw back to those life-defining moments. But the new song is different because it's more forward-looking. Yes, it does glance back at how the Lord created everything, but it stares forward. And in verse 10, we're told to tell all the nations that the Lord reigns. He's in charge. He is sovereign. His will will be done. The world stands firm and cannot be shaken. He will judge all peoples fairly. So let the trees of the forest rustle with praise before the Lord. You see, as frustrating as life is, there is the day of reckoning on the way. And so the notes and the words of the new song we sing are drawn from that future. We live looking forwards to the light of that future when Christ will reign. The psalmist is looking forward with his new song. He's looking to the future and he's saying that the old song is getting really old and stale. Things are maybe not going so well, but it doesn't matter because he's singing a new song anyway, because he's living now in the light of the fullness of God's justice. The day of judgment is here in Psalm 96, but it isn't so much a threat as it is a promise. We all can rejoice. We all can live joyfully because we know that the Lord's fairness and truth will ultimately win out. That should encourage us to embrace God's coming justice and his fairness. Why align our lives with a bunch of mere idols? The psalmist calls out. I'm singing the new song, he says. And he invites us to join him and leave the old behind and join him in the new chorus, the new song. The fact is that we can't really do that on our own. We're all hopelessly tone deaf, you see. But the good news is that Jesus has come into the world and he started a new song again. We just have to join in with him and follow his lead. Why don't you commit yourself today to him? Why don't you commit yourself to him to start to sing his new song? This new song, which is a global song. This new song which is about the wonder and the works of the Lord. This new song which is an exclusive song, which is rooted in his future justice. God bless you as you sing the new song. Enjoy it and sing it loud so that many will know that he is Lord.